Praise the Lord, I say, Hallelujah. I say, Praise the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. God is good. I say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say, Praise the Lord. Hello, and I appreciate you joining us on Healing Streams Prayer Watch Room. Now, the title of this post is Responding to Compassion in Others. Say, Responding. Responding. Say, Lord. Lord. Grant me, grant me the, love the love and the compassion, and the compassion, and the compassion to, respond to respond to compassion in others. To compassion compassion in others. So, Jesus not only demonstrated great compassion, he also showed tremendous compassion. Jesus not only demonstrated great power. Say great power. Great power. Say great power. Great power. But he also showed tremendous compassion. Are you with me? So Jesus' power over nature, we all know it in scripture, how he spoke to the storms and they obey. Evil spirit, how he cast out evil spirit from others. And death was even, and death was what? motivated by compassion for a demon possessed man in mark chapter 5 the bible says this man lived among tombs for a diseased also woman and for a family of a dead girl we saw all this compassion flowing through even people who are dead compassion brought them to life are you with me so the rabbis of the day Consider such people unclean, unclean, unclean. And it's happening today. When you see people suffering, especially these homeless people, we think they are hot, unclean. But we need compassion rather to deal with their situation. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? We, we need what? Compassion to deal with their situation. So that's the problem with humanity today. And so polite society avoided them but jesus reached out and helped them anyway in any anyone in any need and so we are going to pray that god will grant you and me the compassion to use our resources number one money time and talent instead of unnecessary project that have led to deaths of many of our people we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Yes. Try and use some of your time, your money, your talent to do compassion. Begin to pray. Begin. <laughs> so pray for your time. Ask the Lord. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now listen, Jesus responded to compassion in others. That is why Mark tells us in Mark chapter 2, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. amen. So it's a way also I minister. When I see people with that compassion and mercy, then I realize that God wants to touch them. The other day, a minister told me, he said, Pastor, how do you see them? I said, at times I watch them. And when I see that compassion and mercy in them, at times we see some of them crying. And then I realize that God wants to touch him. So all I need is to say in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. And they receive it. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? So at times you see a need in people. You are the one anointed to see it. Others haven't seen it. So all you have to do is to go to the person and tell him, brother, my dear sister, the Lord be with you. And that's it. The sorrow will vanish. Amen. 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 The heaviness will vanish. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And all those hurt will also vanish. Amen. And that is why time they feel the presence on you. Because you're already anointed. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. 
that I am anointed to prophesy your power, your healing, your deliverance upon them in Jesus' name. So in this instance in Mark chapter 2, the Bible says the paralytic need I mean, his need move his friends to action. You see, at times people's needs will move you into action. At times, you may not be the one. You may not be the one to meet the need. But you'll be the vessel to take the person here, hallelujah, Amen. to be touched by the Lord. And that is what it is. Are you with me? So, you see, the other day, I was sitting there and I said, okay, so this is what it is. So why will this guy at the hospital. You see, it was the wife, rather, who was in critical condition. And then you saw it, right? And then now he turned on to the man. And now the man came here. He died, and we have to bury him. Because the whole family rejected him. God knows that the family will reject that man. God knows it. And so God says, I'm going to choose this ministry to bury this man. Hallelujah. Isn't that a privilege? So we are going to pray that may God mark you out. Say, Lord God. Lord God. Mark me. Mark me. On the inside. On the inside. On the outside. On the outside. So that, so that you use me. You use, use me. To meet your need. To meet your need. In people. In people. You deemed. To be, saved, uh, to be saved in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Lord, when you recognize someone's need, do you act? Is a question you have to ask yourself. Now, many people have physical and spiritual needs you can meet, either by yourself or with others who are also concerned. My fellow brothers and my fellow sisters, human need move these four men in Mark chapter 2. Let it also move you to compassionate action. Pray that, Lord God, Our God, let human needs, let human needs move, me to compassion, move me to compassion so that I'll help those in need. So that I'll help those in the name of Jesus, name of begin Jesus. to pray. Just them say amen. amen. Now listen, compassion also goes beyond, beyond words. That's why Job said to Eliphaz, he says, Eliphaz, your advice was like eating the tasteless white of an egg. My God. Do you know the tasteless white of an egg? Have you eaten some before? <laughs> amen. amen. So that is what Job told Eliphaz. Eliphaz, let me tell you, your advice is like what? Tasteless, white of an egg. When people are giving, I mean, going to going through severe trials, when people are going through hate, frustrations, and all those things, you see, ill advice counsel is distasteful. Say it's distasteful. <laughs> you see, I've had a lot of our people in the churches here, in Trinity and prayer out, coming here. And then going out and calling people who come here and advising them evil, evil. And today they are suffering. Listen, if you want to test the power of God, come here and test it and see. You'll see. If it will be well with you. You don't do that. When somebody is suffering, you don't call the person and then destroy the person's life. You don't do that. And now they are calling me to pray for them. No, I won't do that. I will never do that. You hurt the person now. You are now in trouble. You are bedridden. And you are telling me to do what? You have to confess your sins to God. So that God will forgive you. That is enough to deliver you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. That those ill advice counsel. You will never be part of it. Are you with me? Amen. Listen, they may listen politely, but inside they are upset. I've had people come to advise me, Pastor, do it like this. Don't do it like this. Do it like this. And I, I was so upset. I said, why? And the Lord said, pray for the person. So I called the person. I said, hold my hands. 
And by the time I realized, the person was on the ground. <laughs> and I said, don't come to do that again in this office. Are you with me? He said, oh, but you know, I taught that. I said, no, I don't deal with I taught that. I deal with what the Holy Spirit says. So we are going to pray that, Lord, help me not to be part of the ill advice schemes that is going on against people. Hallelujah. Amen. And so because the Bible says, be slow to give advice to those who are hurting. Because they often need compassion more than they need advice. Are you with me? At times you see some people like that, go near them. Just extend your compassion to them. Don't advise them. Don't tell them anything. And that's why Jeremiah saw one ray of hope in all the sun and sorrow surrounding him. He saw, you know, Jeremiah was in a very difficult situation. He saw these things around him. And that's why he said this in Lamentation 3.22. He says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassion never fails. Amen. Yeah. They'll put this guy in a big hole. They'll put this guy from this hole. They'll do this to this guy. Do. And then Jeremiah was sitting down there. He said, Lord, I can't pay the bills. Lord, the rent of money is too much for me. My kids are worrying me. This and this. And then he made that statement, this startling statement. He said, the compassion of the Lord. Hallelujah. I prophesy that in the midst of all that you are going through, you see one ray coming from the sun. You see one light, a, a, a spark of light coming from the darkness. Amen. And so that you prophesy that whatever be the case, it will be well with you. Amen. And so that you will be a vessel to others as well. Amen. Indeed, God is compassionate and God willingly respond with help when we ask. So we are going to ask, Lord, pour your compassion upon my family. Pour your compassion upon my job. Pour your compassion upon those I'm going to reach out to. Pour your compassion upon my holistic being. Begin to pray. <laughs> Just say amen. amen. Now, my brother, my sister, perhaps there is some sin in your life that you thought God will not, will not, will not. I've, I've seen that some people are telling you that you are doomed. They have elected themselves to be prophets of doom. They are telling you that God will never forgive. Now, God's toughest love and mercy are greater than any sin. And he promises forgiveness to all who genuinely repents. May the Holy Spirit convict you always to demonstrate and respond to, to, to compassion to others, especially those who are hurting, those who have been told by these fake pastors, fake, fake, fake prophets, that they are doomed, that the enemy has put sicknesses upon them, that God allow it to happen. No, it's not true. You yourself knowing that when your compassion goes beyond worse and you give to such people or to a needy cause, I believe and you all know people will see and know that indeed God is a compassionate God. So we are going to pray that all those who have become victim of demonic prophecies, all those who have become victim of demonic preaching, false preaching, that God will rescue their mind and their heart, and that God will deposit their mind and their heart in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Begin to pray. <laughs> A 
Seigneur des Seigneurs, c'est Amen. Amen. I am not moved by what I see. Begin to praise God. Begin to praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God. Never stop praising God. Never stop. Praise the Lord. I say, Hallelujah. I say, Praise the Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. God is good. I say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 